the sun. See how it shines bright. Are you a full time pastor's wife? Ever heard about Pastor's Wife Crane Mom platform? Glad to let you know that Pastor's Wife Crane Mom celebrates our third year anniversary. The theme for the program is Bulletproof Ministers' Wives. Last year, we were beautified. This year is touching not my beauty. The date for this program is 24th to 30th of October 2022. And the venue is live at Facebook. Get set as anointed ministers will be ministering live. Come one, come all, as we wear our bulletproof to show forth God's glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Reality mothers, praise the Lord. Yes, it's time. Let's begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. Let's exalt his name. Let's begin to worship him. Thank him for another privilege of being here tonight. Lord, we say thank you. Father, we honor you. Jesus, we adore you. Lord, we give you all the praise. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for strength. Thank you for vigor. Thank you for vitality. Lord, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Jesus, we give you praise. Lord, you are a great God. Father, we honor you. We are not taking you for granted, O oh Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are upon our life, upon our family. You are being so faithful, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Let's begin to pray tonight that, O oh Lord, let my own sent word be speak be spoke tonight. Let my own sent word Father, come send me my tonight. Own word my own word, the, my word own my the word that will change my life, the word that will turn my destiny around. My own part, because tonight will be a powerful night. Begin to open your mouth and begin to ask from the Lord tonight. Say, Father, send me my own word. Send me my own perfect word. Let me hear you clearly today. Let my word, oh Lord, the word that will change my destiny, that will turn my life around. Lord, we honor you. Brade Katalega and Ruder Brezete Legadia Kata. He can brother sent a le brande katula kedede. Father sends me my own word. Lord, we honor you. Father, we exalt you. Take all the glory, Lord. Take all the honor, Lord. There is none like you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. You're, I welcome you all this evening. You're welcome. Tonight, we are taking our evening session. There won't be praise and worship for now. We are going straight to our teaching for tonight. So tonight, I'll be reading the biography of our mommy. Our mommy will be coming up. Our mommy will be coming up very soon. So I'll be reading a profile. I'll be reading a profile. So let's listen and remain ever blessed in Jesus' name. Jane Ondubeze. Our mommy Jane Ondubeze is a microbiologist by profession and a seasoned singles and marriage counselor by divine election. The passion to see singles get colorful marriage led to her monthly program tag Singles Moment of Encounter, which she ran in almost all the stations. Her husband has pastored with diverse testimonies to show. She runs a page on Facebook with same caption. She is married to Pastor David on the base. National Youth Pastor, Winners Chapel International, and they are blessed with two beautiful children. God is good and it is working. Hallelujah. So tonight, we will be having our mommy, my mother, your mother, our beautiful mother. Let's welcome our mommy to the podium this tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Mama is mommy, yeah? Praise the Lord. Mama Faithful, please can you bring mommy in? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, as we wait for mommy, let's begin to appreciate, let's begin to pray. Uh, let's not keep our prayer hotter or cold tonight. We are going to pray tonight and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, O oh Lord, speak through our mommy to us tonight. Let the word that will come forth from the throne of grace tonight, let it be our home word. La cambrade catosa lagade, y brende ketele cambrade cata. He can bread the kettle. Brother, cut his dele. He can bread the de 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 de. can bread the. He can basu cut gada. He can bread the de He can braga te legede. He shente legede. He can braga da he kata. He zeke teke bread the de. He can tu zele can tu. He can bread the kate. He can bread the de 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 de. He can bread the kata. Father, send me your word, O Lord. Speak through our mommy tonight. Mary can tell again. He can bread the day. I can tell the can bread the cat to Zaligada. He can to Zaligada. Father, send me my own word. 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 He can tell the can bread the cat. He can bread the cat. He can to Zaligada. He can bread the cat to Zaligada. He bread the cat to Zaligada. He can bread the cat to Ye cabrada kata kata kata. Ye can bro de sekete. Ye can bro ketele cabragede. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we are talking. Father, we honor you. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Right now is our testimony time. So I will call on Mama Faithful for the audio testimony. Praise the Lord. Are you a full-time pastor's wife? Ever heard about Pastor's Wife Praying Mom platform? Glad to let you know that Pastor's Wife Praying Mom celebrates our third year anniversary. The theme for the program is Bulletproof Ministers' Wives. Last year, we were beautified. This year is touching not my beauty. The date for this program is 24 to 30th of October 2022. And the venue is live at Facebook. Get set as anointed ministers will be ministering live. Come one, come all, as we wear our bulletproof to show forth God's glory. Glory, glory. You see the sun, see how it shines bright. Are you a full-time pastor's wife? Ever heard about Pastor's Wife Praying Mom platform? Glad to let you know that Pastor's Wife Praying Mom celebrates our third year anniversary. The theme for the program is Bulletproof Ministers' Wives. Last year, we were beautified. This year is touching not my beauty. The date for this program is 24 to 30th of October 2022. And the venue is live at Facebook. Get set as anointed ministers will be ministering live. Come one, come all, as we wear our bulletproof to show forth God's glory, glory, glory. You see the sun, 
see how it shines bright. Are you a full time pastor's wife? Ever heard about Pastor's Wife Praying Mom platform? Glad to let you know that Pastor's Wife Praying Mom celebrates our third year anniversary. The theme for the program is Bulletproof Ministers' Wives. Last year, we were beautified. This year is touching not my beauty. The date for this program is 24 to 30th of October 2022, and the venue is live at Facebook. Get set as anointed ministers will be ministering live. Come one, come all, as we wear our bulletproof to show forth God's glory, glory, glory. It's the same thing. It's the same thing I sent to mm -hmm. Mama. Yes, ma it's the same thing. Ma Hallelujah. My name is Vibola uh, Olaji, and I'm a member of Pastor's Wife Praying Mom Forum. It's been a great privilege for these past three years. It's been amazing. It's been wonderful. God has really, really blessed us. And particularly in my life, God has touched me. When I was first invited into this platform, I was scared like, what are the pastors, wife? what are they going to do? But thanks be to God. Three years of grace, three years of impact, three years of diverse testimonies. This platform has really been a source of blessing to me and my family my entire family the prayer aspect has been so 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 great it has drawn us more to god and the testimony keeps speaking in our lives i want to congratulate the convener mama queen and all other admins you have been so wonderful we appreciate you and we pray the lord will strengthen you the lord will uphold you and this forum will keep growing in leaps and bounds in the name of jesus congratulations to the great family pastor's wife praying mom we shall continue to celebrate more greater years in jesus mighty name thank you god bless you love you you see the sun See how it shines bright. Are you a full time pastor's wife? Ever heard about Pastor's Wife Praying Mom platform? Glad to let you know that Pastor's Wife Praying Mom celebrates our third year anniversary. The theme for the program is Bulletproof Ministers' Wives. Last year, we were beautified. This year is touching not my beauty. The date for this program is 24 to 30th of October 2022, and the venue is live at Facebook. Get set as anointed ministers will be ministering live. Come one, come all, as we wear our bulletproof to show forth God's glory, glory, glory. Hello. 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 Hello? Hello, mommy. You're welcome, ma. Hi. Hello, mommy. You're welcome, ma. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God of the Thank you. Thank you. So, mommy, you can now start now. You can start now, ma. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord bless you. Oh, good to be your miss this evening. I give God praise. I'm so excited to be in your midst in your third year anniversary. 
God is faithful. Congratulations to the Covenant Division of Pastors Wives Praying Moms. Congratulations the Royalty Mom. Royalty Mothers. The Lord bless you. We thank God for what He's doing through this platform. In wishing lives, touching lives, changing lives. So we give Him praise. We bless His name. God has been always faithful. We give him all the praise. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to all the admin. Congratulations to all the members of our royalty mothers. I deeply appreciate all of you. I love you all. God bless you. It's a privilege to be in your midst, and I don't take it for granted. God bless you. I appreciate you all. In Jesus' name. So please, shall we pray? I know we've been praying, so shall we pray? Yes, mommy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Father, we give you praise. We bless your name. We thank you for what you have done in our life for the past three years, especially for this past year. We are most grateful. Amen. For lives you touched, for protections, for provisions, mm -hmm. for helping us to be a good pastor's wife all through this year. We say thank you. For thank every you. testimony shared in this platform, we say thank you. Thank for you, the Jesus. strength to pray for our husbands, our children, their ministries, we say thank you. Thank we you are Lord. grateful. Thank you have Lord. done us well. Thank we are alive Lord. today because you kept us. We say yes, thank Lord. you. We turn all the praise in your name, in Amen. the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, I pray for everyone listening at tonight, everyone here, Father in heaven, for this third anniversary. I pray that none of them, O oh Lord, will return remaining the same. Amen. Just as it of this year says, bulletproof. Let everyone be bulletproof indeed. Against Amen. every devourer, against Amen. every enemy of our destiny, Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the teaching tonight, oh Lord, be a blessing to everyone. Let Amen. the hours you are spending here not be in vain. Let Amen. there be a transformation of life. Let Amen. everyone be changed. Let Amen. everyone be fired up to fulfill Amen. destiny in a grand style, in the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy Ghost, have your as we go into this teaching. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So the topic Amen. before us this night says, um, finding purpose as a pastor's wife. Finding purpose as a pastor's wife. That is the topic we are running with. Finding papers as a pastor's wife. The question is, what is papers? Let's start from there. Papers is the reason for which something is done, created, or the reason for which something exists. So when we say pastor's wife or finding purpose as a pastor's wife. That is you discovering the reason why you're here on earth. God is not uh, um, a God that doesn't have something to do. He, he will just create you without attaching anything that you would do. Before he packaged you and sent you on an errand here on earth, there is something for you to do. There is something he has already packaged for you to do to do. So if you are not discovering it, it means you are not fulfilling purpose on earth. So the scripture we'll be running with is um, Jeremiah 1.5. So that is the scripture I'll be using for this teaching tonight. Jeremiah 1.5, I read, it says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto nations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So before your mom and your dad met you, God already arranged you for something. 
has already packaged you for something. So you are not an accident. You didn't just happen. You didn't just happen. There is something, there is a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Dr. Mike Smura, I quote, he says, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. That is by Dr. Mike Smura. So when you don't know the purpose why you are created, anything goes. You could just enter anything at all. You could just do whatever comes your way. Everywhere becomes the way. But when you know the purpose why you are created, the journey becomes easy. Praise the Lord. So your purpose was given to you by God, not for you, but for others. Your assignment here on earth was given to you, not for your use, not for your own gain, but for the benefit of others. Just imagine if our father in the Lord, Bishop David Oyele, did not answer the call, did not find purpose, thousands of us would have just been wondering about but just imagine how many people we are connected to these peoples. And imagine that he did not even answer the call. He did not locate the other peoples. So it means that all these ones, you and I, that is connected to these peoples would have just been wondering about. So your purpose was given to you by God, not for you, but for others. Praise the Lord. So until you locate your purpose, life continues to be a body. Until you locate your purpose, life continues to be a body. The challenge with most of us pastors' wife is just that we don't even know where we are going to. We have not located purpose. That is why we are most frustrated. Most of us are just frustrated. You are just complaining. You are just, you know, it's just because you have not located purpose. Praise the Lord. And most of all, we just relax. All we do is there is transfer, you pack. Label the bags. This one, kitchen, this one. And the next thing that is, you feel is your assignment is school runs. You go to school, pick children, come back, you bath them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's church time. You rush your No program for your life. Nothing for your life. So, why most of us is frustrated is simple. Your life is driven by your vision. Your life is driven by your vision. Hmm. What, you what you see. Your vision is purpose translated to picture. Your vision is purpose translated to picture. Your vision is purpose, that is your purpose translated to picture. For example, picture someone that usually struggle to rise early in the morning. One day, he has a very important flight to catch by 6 a.m. Instantly, the mind tells the body to rise, to rise up. Whether it feels like it or not, the body obeys. The body was motivated to break the norm. The norm. Why? Because there is a clearer picture painted by the thoughts. So that is why by five, not even six, even four, you're already awake because there is a flight to cash. I know when you miss that, uh, that flight, <laughs> just imagine you're going for foreign mission and miss your flights. You know, your brain, everything around you is working because there is something you're picturing. There is something you are running with. So when you are not running with something, you can't sleep and wake up by 10. In fact, even when you wake up, you stretch again and say, let me go back and enjoy this sleep because there is nothing you're pursuing. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So let's look at reasons for purpose. Reasons for purpose. Number one reason is that your purpose is an answer to a problem in God's creation. Your purpose is an answer to a problem in God's creation. Your purpose is an answer to a problem in God's creation. I read Romans 8, 19. Romans 8, 19, I read, for the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. 22 says, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travelleth 
in pain together until now. So the earth will be waiting until you locate your peoples so that you solve that problem that you need, that only you can solve for, for us here on earth. Say so the fruit of a tree is not for the benefit of that tree, but to add value to whoever, for whoever comes in contact with the tree. So any tree that eats up its fruit destroys its future. Any tree that eats up its fruit destroys its, yeah, its future. So what am I saying? <laughs> that your assignment, that your purpose, that you are not willing to fulfill. You will give account at the last day. God will ask you, what did you do with that assignment I have given to you? So you are not, that assignment is not for you. It's for people around you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So until you begin to serve others with what God has loaded in you, the greatness you seek will continue to be elusive. But when you bow low to serve, then you rise in life. When you bow low to serve others with what God has given to you, you will rise in life. Financially, you will rise. Family life, you will rise. On every aspect of your life, you will rise. Praise the Lord. So it is only important for you to discover your purpose, but you must translate that purpose into a vision for your life. The, vision, the purpose you have discovered, you must translate it to a vision so that you can run with it. The vision is what fuels or powers your life. The vision is what fuels or powers your life. Praise the Lord. Number two reason for purpose is it is meant to define your existence. Your purpose is meant to define your existence. Your purpose in life is meant to define your existence. So discovering purpose enables you to live your life as God ordained for you to live. I said discovering your purpose enables you to live your life as God ordained for you to live. But loss of purpose means living another person's life and wasting yours. I said loss of purpose means living another person's life and wasting yours. This is where so many of us, pastor's wife, find ourselves. You hear that pastor, okay, wife, is doing singles program. You start. You hear again, uh, so, 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 person, open YouTube channel. You start. Without actually asking God, is this what you want me to do? Is this where I'm created for? Is it what I'm cut off for? Or cut out for? You are just, anything goes. No, that is not how to drive your life. That is not how to drive your life. So the abuse of potential reviews undiscovered peoples. The abuse of potential reviews undiscovered peoples. A purpose-driven life is an intentional life. A purpose-driven life is an intentional life pastor's wife, be intentional with your life. Be intentional with your life. Don't live your life carelessly. Don't just roll, do trial, try and error with your life. No. There is a place for you. If there is no place for you, God wouldn't have created you. Praise the Lord. So number two is that it is meant to define your existence. Existence. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So let's look at how to discover peoples. How do I discover peoples? How do I discover peoples? Number one, consult the manual. Number one, how do I discover peoples? Consult the manual. Almost every product we buy in the market comes with manual. Your television has manual. Your um, phone has manual, unless it is a fairly use. Almost everything we buy in the market comes, apart from paper, <laughs> comes with manual. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So that manual tells us the functions of, of the products we are buying. 
God's word is the manual for our life. God's word is the manual for our life. My husband, in the words of my husband, he says, I quote him, saying, success is a secret. The cheapest access to it is the manufacturer's manual. So life, for you to be successful in this life, for you to fulfill your purpose, you must get back to the manufacturer's manual, which is the Bible. That is where God's intentions for your life, you will locate it there. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I wrote down here, I said, your destiny is in God's book, in a coded form, so no one can steal it. Your destiny is in God's book, in a coded form, so that no one can steal it, which means you must search. For you to find the reason why you are created, you must search the Bible. You must search the scripture. Psalm 40 verse 7 says, I read, says, then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Hallelujah. And Hebrews 10, 7 repeated the same thing, almost verbatim. He said, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O Lord. Praise the Lord. So the scripture says in, also in Psalm 119, verse 105, I read, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So the more light you got from God's word, the more every dark part of your life is lightened. The more light you got from God's word, the more every dark part of your life is lightened. Which is say, you might not see a place where your name is spelled out side by side in the scripture that this is your purpose. You might not see that but you definitely find a direction to your assignment. You definitely find a clue, a direction to your assignment. So deep deeper into the scripture, that is the manual for our life. That is where God packaged everything concerning us in. And when you go deeper, you will find light and that light will darken, will lighten every dark areas of your life. Praise the Lord. Praise God. How do I discover people's number two? How do I discover people's number two? Embark on a journey of self-evaluation. Embark on a journey of self-evaluation. True self-examination is not self-condemnation. True self-examination is not self-condemnation. Neither is it comparing yourself with another. True self-examination raises you to become more like God because God opens your eyes to see who you are in him, where he has prepared for you. Then he also empowers you to be there. He makes you to become what he has um, created you for. So when you go on this journey of self-evaluation, consulting God's word, and relevant books in a place of prayer. The prayer here is prayer of inquiry. That is, you are asking God questions and you are, you are taking notes to know what he's saying concerning that. So, and in that process, you must be sensitive. You must be highly sensitive. If you can watch our services, maybe covenant hours, um, covenant hours of prayers, or any of, any of our services, you could see our presiding bishop always writing something in the midst of the prayers. So as the prayers is going on, he has two books. One is the notebook, another one is that book. And that book, as the, as the prayers are going on, things are dropping, he's jotting down. He's jotting down. Having worked closely with him, I've quite observed that, that he's always jotting something down as the prayer is going on, as he's praying, something is dropping, he's putting it down. So you must be highly sensitive when you're doing this kind of prayer to really know what God is saying um, concerning what you're asking him for. Remember I said the prayer we're talking about here is prayer of inquiry. Recently, I am back on a project. It's a, actually a book project. Most of the things you'll be hearing tonight is actually an extract from the book I'm working on. The title of the book is Youthful 
and useful. Youthful and useful. The topic was delivered directly from God like that. And then when I've been on that book for some months now, I remember that there are some topics I want to write. I'm asking God, Lord, what, what are you saying concerning this? Lord, what are you saying concerning this on that particular topic? And he could speak anywhere. It could be in the church. It could be on the road. It could be even right in the kitchen. So now I am always with pen and paper. So as he start talking concerning any of the topic, I will start writing. And as I'm writing, it's just flowing. As I'm jutting down, it's flowing. If I'm not with pen that same time, I will forget it. And sometimes I will crack my head to remember everything the way it just came. And sometimes I couldn't. So because of that, I'm always with a pen and a book writing down. When it starts, I'll just start and it flows. So you must be intentional when you are praying that kind of prayer. Examining your life, there are some things that will be coming up like corrections. He's telling you do this. He's telling you why not stop this, do that. So as he's saying it, you are just noting those things down. So you must be highly sensitive when you are doing um, embarking on self-evaluation with prayers. Sometimes you add like fasting to it but it must be prayer of inquiry. You are asking, some, asking for something. So those uh, pain, as it, the answer is dropping, you are putting it down. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So let's look at number three, how to discover people's. Number three, the pain. Another pointer to your assignment on earth or your papers on earth is your pain. Pain actually shows up to inform you of what is out of order in your life. I take it again, say pain comes up or shows up to inform you of what is out of order in your life. A lot of times, most innovations we are born out of trying to walk around pain. This pain is beyond the physical pain that we all know. It might even be a discomfort in your life. It might just be a discomfort Imagine if Laban had not treated Jacob the way he did in Genesis 31-7. That, that place, he changed his wages up to 10 times. If that kind of discomfort did not come in, he wouldn't have settled, he would have just settled, you know, for temporary respites of life, leaving the major things. So in this same way, the discomfort you are going through in your place of work or other areas of life might be a signal to change location. Hey, pastors, why I've just come down. I'm saying change location. Please, you won't go and tell your husband, I am not comfortable with where, where I am. This job you are doing. I have seen another vision. It's time to change. No, that is not what I mean. You are married. <laughs> So you are not running this your race now alone. You are running it in line with your husband, who is already fulfilling destiny. So in this case, you don't just say, I have located my assignment. Bye-bye, I'm going. No, you have to go back to your husband. Tell your husband your visions. Tell him your, your dreams, your passions. You know, just discuss with him. By the time you share those things with him, one on one, they will be asking questions how can this fit into what we are doing currently? You know, by the time you discuss with him, you will know a way forward. Ask him questions in five years' time, in 10 years' time, what, what, where do we see our lives? You know, sit down and discuss with him. I remember sometime this year, um, a pastor's wife called me, please, in case if you are in this platform, it just for this example, is just to help another person, not in any way to share your this. Meanwhile, I'm not calling your name anyway. So just to share, to help someone in that same situation. She called me that, say, mom, I'm not fulfilling people's. And I just feel I'm wasting my life. You know, she was talking and talking and talking, and I already know the direction where she's going. By the time she's done, I say, please, in this case now, I can't go directly and give you any counsel because you're married. Please go back to your husband in the cool of the day, in the night, maybe midnight, wake him up or even inform him on time that you want them, you want of you to talk. 
So wake up when the children are sleeping, just start uh, telling him that, honey, you know, this has been my passion for life. This is my dream. This is my dream. And I'm not, I'm not just seeing, I'm just feeling, I'm not feeling just for fulfilled. How can we build in this my plan to what we are doing uh, currently? Or what is our life in five or 10 years time? Discuss with him. When you are done with him, refer to me the following day, then I will know what to say. You know, she did and called me the next day. She was so happy. She was so excited. She said, ah, mommy, all my life, all the days I've married, I've never had a sweet discussion like this. And it turned out positively. There is a brighter light. I could see where we are going to. You know, it was, it was not, it was just so easy. And I, the whole picture was just played before me with him. And I'm so happy now. I'm relaxed. You know, from what and what they discussed, I was able to ship in one or two things concerning what they, their resolution, what they came out for. So you cannot just stand up and uh, walk away and say you're changing location. No, it has to be alongside with your husband. The same, another pastor's wife, this, this same year, another pastor's wife called me just like the same thing. Not actually called me, we, I went to the house, you know, to find out some certain things because I noticed some things were not really the way it should. And uh, from her own discussion, you know, it also tends to the same way. Ah, I was like, <laughs> well, most of us are actually being frustrated for nothing. I said, talk with your husband. Don't be frustrated in this job. Talk with your husband. By the time you are done with your husband, you will know exactly how to factor in your own vision into his own vision. Or if he will, there must be a way out by the time you are done with the discussion. You know, but I was so happy. The first person, there is a brighter light. I could see something. I, there, there is a hope. There is a point as to where they are going to. So please, if you are pain, you are not satisfied, you are not fulfilled in where you are. As a pastor's wife, don't just stand up and start attacking the man. Please, you are married already. If you walk out of this marriage, it will help issues. If you are not happy there, you will just frustrate your days. You will get high blood pressure and all manner of things will just happen to you. You'll be falling in and out of uh, sickness, not knowing actually that it is the state of your mind that is causing the sickness. So please, the pain is a pointer to where you are, what you're supposed to solve in life. But in this case, as a pastor's wife, you must carry your husband along. Two of you agree and then you forge ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So pain forces you to think. And when you think, there'll be a way forward. Pain causes you to change. You know, there must be some approach to change if it's actually pain. And sometimes it's not this kind of pain. It's a, it's a discomfort. It's something you are not just comfortable with. Praise God. So it can could be a pointer to your assignment on earth. Praise the Lord. Number three, how to discover purpose. Number three, that is a pointer to your assignment. Number three is your passion. Your passion. Your passion is what, what you will do excitedly. Your passion is what you will do excitedly, even if you are not paid for it. What you will do excitedly, even if you are not paid for it. Others around you might not understand your excitement in that venture or endeavor. But when you are engaged in it, time makes no sense to you at that time. When you're in, in it, you don't even know that the time is flying. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is something you are passionate about. I take my own life for example. I can give hours when it's issues of marriage, any marriage that is not working, and I need to. Uh, come in. I can sacrifice my food for the day. I can sacrifice my hours. I can give up every other thing that day just to see a smile on that person's face. It burns in me or a relationship that is not working or somebody that is being mistreated in a relationship. I, I feel so bad. I feel, I, I feel as if I should just remove it from that person's body. So I can sacrifice everything 
just to make sure that that person smiles that day. It's a passion. Not because of what you give me, not because of money. I remember one time a friend of mine visited, she came from outside the country and she runs this counseling program, um, counseling sections online. So people pay for it per hour. So depending on the time she spent, she, she will charge you for it. So she was around in one of the times I was uh, counseling. She was like, ah, mama, this thing you are doing is money, no, money. You can make a lot of money with this. You're even better than me in this thing. But yet you're not even collecting money. You're just dashing them your time. Why not just arrange this thing so that money will be coming in? You know, she said it, I just smiled. But when she has gone, I gave it a thought. I said, start running the cancelling section on money. <sighs> on a second, money. That is, I will see somebody crying, looking for help. I will not ask the person to pay money. I wasn't just comfortable with it. I said, no, no, I can't. And looking at her life that is collecting money and my own life that is not collecting money, she's not better than me in any way. We can't even compare our lives in all ramification, material things, in, even in that money we're talking about, she's not better. So I would just looked at her and said, no, I don't think this. I just enjoy the testimonies. When the testimonies come in, that is my joy. That is my passion. In fact, I, I am I'm happy. I am excited. The testimonies as just roll in, I'm just happy. So doing it for money, I'm not cut out for it. So your purpose could be the passion, that thing, you know, that bones in you. When you when you see it is not going the way it should go, you are not. You can have sleepless night for it. Most of you that have called me, you know, that I can spend some time. When I, if I even hear the voice and it's not the way it should, I can spend some time actually. Or an issue. It's not that I have all the time, but it's just a passion. Praise God. So passion is the fuel needed to drive the car of your life. Passion is the fuel needed to drive the car of your life. If you are not passionate for anything, then you need to think again. You just need to think again. There must be something that you can tell them to just excuse me, I'm in for something now. There must be something that even if you are not paid for, ah, you are happy doing it. That might be a pointer to where God wants you to be. So passion is another indicator of where you're supposed to be. I mean, your assignment on earth. Praise the Lord. Another thing is your talent. Talent, that is your gift. Praise the Lord. Your talent, or you call it your gift. Praise the Lord. Talent is, um, they are natural endowments. Talents are natural endowments. Something you are born with. Everybody on the surface of the earth was born with a gift. Nobody was born empty. Everybody has a gift. Your own gift might not be my own gift. Your own assignment, definitely it will be different. We all, we are born with something. Praise God. So, gift is your inherent ability. It's something inborn. <laughs> it's something you don't pray to do. People might find it difficult, but for you, effortlessly you do it, you do them. Effortlessly you could carry out that assignment without complaining. That is what, that is your gift. For example, birds don't need prayers to fly. Birds in the air, they don't need prayers to fly. Uh, to fly. The ability to fly is in them, is in both. It just comes naturally without struggle. It just flows. Praise God. Or you look at fish inside water. Fish, they don't need prayers <laughs> to swim. It's a miracle. It's a wonder inside water. Just imagine you, you want to catch fish inside water with your hand. You will drown. That is, you know, it's effort. That is, that is the inhabitant. That is where they are meant to be. That is what they are created for. So when you are, when, when you are manifesting your talent, <laughs> it's effortlessly, it flows. 
it just flows. So the discovering of your, your purpose, in the discovering of your purpose, you have to look in what? Look in what? What is in you? What has God deposited in you that you can do without struggle? There is something God has embedded in you to make you useful on earth. There is something God has put in you to make you matter, to make you count on earth. So the discovering of your talent could be a pointer to your assignment on earth. Hallelujah. The scripture in Proverbs 18, 16, I read it. Proverbs 18, 16 made us to understand that a man's gift, that is talent, makes room for him and brings him before king. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember, you were created to serve humanity with your gift. You are created to serve humanity with your gifts. There is something in you. <laughs> For instance, if you carry me now and send me to kitchen, you have not given me any punishment. Just be ready to eat all manner. Because if I'm in the kitchen, anything happens. I just like trying so many things. I have my recipes in the kitchen, which is not popular, which is different. You know, it comes effortlessly. And my mother will say that that thing has been dear right from childhood, that as early as two years, I was already entering kitchen. And that is how I got this uh, bond fear. That was when I was quite small. Fire, I said, I went to the kitchen to cook and I was using fire before two years. So it's something that, you know, is in me, is a gift in me. So kitchen is like, whenever I'm in the kitchen, I derive joy trying so many things, just trying so many things. I remember when we were in, why then in Kenan land, you know, so many things you will not do. And there's so many businesses that I normally run, we are pending. So I was just like, and somebody, a guest just visited us, just came to greet. The guest uh, stayed like more than one month almost like three months in a, our guest house there. So she came around, he came around, I was cooking. So I served him food, he ate, he was like, wow. So this kind of food is here and I'll be, I'll be eating rubbish. Mommy, please, can you be supplying me food? Not that you are cooking, no, you know, I'll, I'll pay for it. At least once a week, let me eat better food. This man will transfer 10,000 into my account every week for two times, as in two times meal. That week, that means you can call it a meal. And for one person, a meal 5,000. Let me just call it, because every week is 10,000. And it's just two times I'll supply the, the food. I will not go there. He will send his driver to come and carry the food. We beg him, mommy, please, the food today. Will it by what time? Ah, can I get it? You know, just one meal. I was making my cool money <laughs> with my talent. <laughs> Even to prepare the food, I don't think I would spend up to 1,000 to make or 1,500 to make that food, but again, on top of it. So you have something unique in you. Use it. Use it. Look inward. There is something in you. And I thank God that for this past year, I've had some people from this platform, this same platform, you know, uh, sending some testimonies of what they have started doing. I remember one particular person, she sent me, I've not seen her physically, she sent me a handbag, um, now sent um, lunch box, um, school bags, you know, to me. And she said, I am the one that did it. Ah, they were so beautiful. I was like, you made this with machine? He said, yes, so neatly done so neatly done so she's just in her house in her corner making cool money from what she could do so looking what there is something in you there is something god has put inside you that you will do even without anybody forcing you so you don't need to be running doing this doing that you know that you are not even cut out for anything that be, you are being pushed to do is not your assignment anything your husband is begging you to do most of us you started prayer um prayer uh you organizing prayer and that prayer you know that you are you can't even pray for one hour and you say you're organizing prayer most of you even <laughs> even 
in that prayer. You are disturbing your husband to write prayers for you. You are disturbing him. Ah, calm down. You might not be called for pulpit or for mic, but there is something you could do. It could be fashion. It could be it could be hairdressing. It could be other other businesses. But just make sure that it's something you are doing that is giving you joy, something you are passionate about, something you you can do effortlessly with nobody calling you for it or nobody forcing you to do it. In that case, you will enjoy your life. You will be happy. You will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> so another point at your assignment on earth, how to discover purpose, is feedbacks. Feedbacks. What do people praise or compliment you for? There is something people always compliment about you, you know, ah, you are too good in this or you're too good in that. <laughs> what people notice most about you could be where your assignment is. What people notice easily about you could be where your assignment is. So take time to pray. Notice those qualities. Take time to pray about it. Get confirmation from God. And please, you can launch out. You can launch out. Some of you that can pray for 24 hours, my dear, you can open prayer units <laughs> or pray, prayer programs, you know, and just make sure that you are doing something you love. You are doing exactly something you love. For instance, talking now, I can talk here to you tomorrow. In fact, it was a time I went for Wobi. I took Wobi from 8 to, to 12 without sitting down. I, I took it to 12.30, stretch. And after that, I started counseling. And in that counseling, I, I, I stood all through this period, four hours without sitting down. And I didn't feel, even feel it because I was just flowing. I was enjoying what I was doing. I was just happy. I was just flowing. So anything you do struggling is not your assignment. It's not your purpose. Please retreat and think. When you think there could be a better way, you can actually know where to go to. You can actually know where, what to do without stressing your life up. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So I said feedback, what people comment mostly about you could be a pointer to your papers on earth. And lastly, let me take this one, visions. Visions, this means an unfolding of God's plan as it relates to you an unfolding of God's plan as it relates to you. Here, God directly delivers an assignment to you. Here, God directly delivers an assignment to you. Let's take a, a, a look at the Bible. That's some biblical examples. We see uh, Moses. Moses encounter, encounter with the burning bush delivered his assignment to him. And what is that assignment? To bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Another example is uh, Gideon. Uh, Gideon had an angelic visitation that launched him into his assignment. I mentioned Moses, the encounter he had with the burning bush. And I mentioned Gideon, the angelic visitation that delivered his, his purpose to him. But in our contemporary world, we could see our father in the faith, Bishop David Oyedebo, that had 18 hours vision, 18 hours vision, where God delivered the mandate to him. And today, the impact of that vision is globally felt. His own came directly from God. Praise God. So you might not hear a voice calling your name, saying, my son, David, <laughs> get to a quiet place. I want to talk to you. You might not hear that. Or you might not hear a voice like Moses, Moses, or an angelic um, appearances, like in the case of Gideon. But looking at the other areas, other uh, ways we have discussed already about um, 
about uh, discovering purpose can help you to really know why you are here on earth. And now that you're married, make sure you line it to your husband's assignment. Two of you must figure it out, know when to start it, when, how to do it, where to do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's look at translating purpose to vision. Translating purpose to vision. Translating purpose, the purpose you have discovered. Now, how do I translate it to vision? I wrote down here, I said, purpose that is not translated to vision is like being a spectator in the event of one's life. Purpose that is not translated to vision is like being a spectator in the events of one's life. However, translating your purpose into a vision, which is a task that must be accomplished, will lead to the following outcomes. Number one, vision provides a, law, a lifelong assignment that will keep you busy all your life. Every, vision, every visionary is a man of speed because God works with the visionary to make it come alive. Jeremiah 1, 12, I'll read. Jeremiah 1, 12 says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. So vision is a function of, I say, vision is a fountain of strength for your life. Your vision is a fountain of strength for your life. True visionaries are self-motivated, driven from within. To them, failure is never an option. When you see a visionary, failure is not even, he's not seeing the failure, he's seeing success. You can be like, ah, is this man well at all? Do he actually know what he's doing? Just wait. If he's a visionary, <laughs> you will see where he will end and you'll be shocked. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 29 says, I read, then said, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more anymore in his name. But his words was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. <laughs> if he's a visionary, ah, forget it. The driving force is already inside. He doesn't wait for anybody, anybody to encourage him or her. So when your vision, when your purpose is translated to vision, it will boost your effectiveness and makes you relevant in life. It will boost your effectiveness and makes you relevant in life. Praise God. So it will give you clearer direction to life and you will be empowered to follow through with tax because you can see the bigger picture. You already, you have already seen the vision of where you're going to. So every other thing is like a distraction and you don't mind the distraction. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. That is Proverbs 29, 18. Without vision, there is no caution or boundary. If you don't have vision, there is no boundary. There is no caution. Everywhere is where. Everywhere is a way for you. Praise God. So vision is the breaker of, of, of limits. Vision is the breaker of limits. A man of vision cannot be limited by situations and circumstances. A man of vision cannot be limited by situations and circumstances. So let's look at how to translate purpose to vision. That is the process. How to translate purpose to vision. What are the process? Number one, write. It begins with writing. It begins with writing. Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3. I'll read. Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3. And it said, Habakkuk 2, chapter 2, verse 2 said, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may not he that he may run the readeth 
that readed it. Three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Whatever you cannot write remains in the realm of the intangible. Whatever you cannot write remains in the realm of the intangible. If you are able to lay hold on it, it will be by chance. It just as I told you earlier, you know, you must write it down, make it plain. Have a focus. When you when you place it everywhere, write it, have your vision, write it on the wall, write it on, everywhere in the toilet. This year, I had a, a time with my husband discussion. Say, in your 50th, what do you want? What are you seeing in your 50th birthday? You know, I, by the time we are done talking, I wrote it down everywhere in the house. At my 50th birthday, this is, this is, this is, you know, it's everywhere. In fact, we sing it like a song in the house. So write it, make it plain. Let everybody that runs, um, that sings it, run with it. So number one process is you must do what? Write it down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So as you commit to writing whatever he tells you, as you commit to writing whatever he tells you, the Holy Spirit will unveil more and more. So as you're writing, he'll be unveiling more to you. He'll be unveiling more of these things to you. Praise the Lord. So you have to write down. Number two process is segment what you see or hear into parts. Segment what you see or hear into parts. Life is a journey. And because your life is, your purpose is a lifelong journey. It comes in phases. There is no end. There is only change of levels. What am I saying? Your purpose, the vision. God does not just deliver everything from A to Z to you. It comes in phases. So you must segment it into parts. If God deliver everything to you, you and I, you know what will happen. We will not need God again because we already know what will happen next year. We know what will happen in 10 years, in 20 years. So we will not need God. So I guess that is why God is not giving us the people everything, vision, everything. No, it comes in phases. As you do one, he will, he will unfold another one. As you enter another one, it, you, he will unfold, another one will unfold. He will keep opening it chapter by chapter. You just see yourself changing levels. People might not even know what you're doing, but you know you're fulfilling purpose. You don't need to go to the internet and announce it, but just make sure that in that your corner, you're fulfilling purpose. You know what you're doing. You are not just sleeping. Isaiah 28, 13 says, I paraphrase it, but the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, Line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. In phases. So segmenting that vision makes it handleable and also gives you the ability, ability to evaluate progress. You'll be able to know, am I actually making progress in this thing I'm doing? Am I, am I actually doing something? Am I, or I'm just stagnated? Am I in one place? You will actually know whether there is there is a, an, an improvement and a addition to the previous things you've done. So segment it in parts. Every day, you know that there is something I have done concerning my assignment. Any day you didn't do anything concerning your assignment, you have not done anything that day. That day is like wasted. So every day, no matter how busy you are, if you have a vision, make sure there is something you are adding to that particular uh, vision for that day. Number three, constantly review your journey. Remember, we're looking at how to translate papers to vision. And we said number one is by writing. Number two, segment what you see or hear into parts. Then number three, now constantly review your journey. Constantly review your journey. James 3, 13 to 16. I read message translation. Live wisely. is the way you live, not the way you talk that counts. 
So as a believer, we need constant self-appraisal to see how we are living. We need constant self-appraisal to know how we are living. Since God rested for rested on the seventh day, God rested. So you must take out time in the week to rest and appraise yourself. Appraise yourself. Everybody might, everybody might be praising you outside, but you know yourself better than anybody. You know. You know whether you're praying. You know if, whether it's only when there is prayer meeting you're praying. You know yourself. So take out time. Appraise yourself. You are the one that can tell yourself the truth. You know yourself more than anybody. See yourself, your husband. And maybe your husband might, might even be afraid of what you will say and he's trying to tell you that he's, 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 everything is well, everything is well. Maybe he doesn't want you to explode. But you know yourself. So take time. Appraise your life. Appraise your work with God. Appraise what you're doing currently. Are you making progress? Hallelujah. So your activities for the week must be appraised. That way, you get constantly, you get to improve on areas. You know some areas to improve on, where to work on. You just know that you check every area to really know whether it's actually working. You check how well you manage your time. You check how well you manage your time, how well you relate with people. Some of us, we don't relate. You have a friend today, tomorrow is trouble. And to you, everybody is the one having problem. You don't, you don't know that it's you. If somebody complains about you, one person, another person, another person, you have a problem. So that person you are even angry with is not the problem. You are the problem. But until you sit down and ask yourself questions, evaluate yourself. By then you'll be able to know that, ah, I need to walk here. I need to, you know, sit up in this area. You know, tell yourself the truth. Praise God. Let's run faster. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's look at running with your vision. How do you run with this vision? The purpose that you have translated to vision, how do I run with it? So after you have mapped out your vision, the next thing is evaluate what you are doing now. Evaluate what you are doing now, and it will not be difficult to see where it will fit into. I say it again. I said, after you have mapped out your vision, the next thing is evaluate what you are doing now. And it will not be difficult to see where it will fit into. If you see what, if you see that you, what you are doing is not in line with your purpose, don't just jump out. <laughs> Devise an exit plan. Don't just jump out. If what you're doing currently does not fit in with your purpose, don't just jump out. You have to sit down and devise an exit plan. And in this case, just as I said earlier, as a pastor's wife, whatever your plan is, make sure it's in line with your own, with your husband's plan or ministry. So if you want to leave, don't drag him. Don't say, eh, it's time to leave. No. Make sure that you sit down, talk. I've already said it earlier. You talk a way out and you know when to. If you're leaving, you know when to. Even if you say, ah, your husband just woke up and say, I am tired. You know, maybe because of uh, things are not going the way he expected in his place of work. And he's just like, I'm tired. Well, no, you see, don't just say, ah, thank God, I've been praying for this. No. No, <laughs> just say, honey, please sit down. Now that you want us to leave, all things are not the way we were expecting. Where are we going from now or from here? Sit down and talk. Encourage that man. If you are going, what are we going for? What are we going to do? What will we be doing? Which assignment are we facing? It must be discussed. Make the vision plain. Sit down. Write it out. Map it out and know when to, before you now start taking steps to, to realign with your purpose once again. Before you start taking uh, steps, make sure that before realigning, you have discussed, you know your way forward, you know where you're going from where you are currently. Praise God. 
So you use the image of the vision you discovered to paint a picture of your future that is bigger than your past. I said, use the image of the vision you discovered to paint a picture of your future that is bigger than your past. Habakkuk 2, 2 says, I read, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that run at it. He may run that read at it. Praise God. That is Habakkuk 2, 2. Please, if he's your husband that is running out, please, he should let you know where you're going to. Not that he just said he wants to leave, but you jump up and say, I'll be praying for this. No, <laughs> you might run into trouble. So please, the vision must be plain so that as you are running with him, the whole family is running together. You will know where you are running to. Praise the Lord. So after capturing your plans, attach timelines to them. After capturing your plans, attach timelines to them. Ecclesiastes 31 says, that is a New Living Translation, say, for everything there is a reason, a time for every activity under heaven. You need to set time for everything you plan to do, everything you plan to do, set out time for it, or else it will never get done. If you don't get time for that assignment, when to start, where to start, <laughs> you might not get it done. You might just like, okay, okay, I will, I will. And I will, I will, we continue. The year will just come and pass, another year we enter like that. So there must be a time frame for it. Praise the Lord. Then after capturing your vision, you attach timeline to, to it. The next, do your plan. Do your plan. If you do nothing about what you see, <laughs> You are only a fan of your vision. That's Bishop David Oyede, I'm just quoting him. He said, if you do nothing about what you see, you are only a fan of your vision. Unfortunately, plan, um, fans are not paid. Fans don't get paid. It is the players, those who engage that get paid. If you are not engaging in that vision, <laughs> you will not get paid. So even if you have to take baby steps, start somewhere, just start somewhere, do something. At the end, at the end of this year anniversary this year, last year, some people, they've already shared testimony. I've had plenty of testimonies from this program, your two years anniversary, which I was a part. And this year, I am expecting another major testimonies from each and every one of you. So what you're hearing is not just to take notes, it's not just to hear, it's to go back and put it to work. Put it to work. Sit down, examine your life. Am I fulfilling people's? How do I get myself, my, my, my plan, my dreams, my visions, my papers aligned back so that I can fulfill people's? Praise the Lord. Next, identify or create a support system. Identify or create a support system, put a support system in place to keep you on track. Keep a support system in place to keep you on track. And in a short while, you will see yourself closer to your dream than you thought was possible. I say keep, keep, um, a support system in place. I remember earlier, I've already said I'm working on a project, on a book project. I remember when that um, that thing came, the 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 book project came. You know, when God told me the title of the book, and He gave me a time frame. He said, "Before you leave this office, I want that book useful uh, and useful." I was like, "Ah, oh, God." I beg, just give me something on relationship. I already have materials. I will just come by fast. I don't. I won't even take one week. <laughs> it will be out. But this one, mm -mm, I like my comfort zone. I was like, I was struggling. Like I would not, you know. I shared it with uh, my husband. He said, if God gave it to you, it's because he knows you will do it. So what it takes to deliver that thing is already in you. If not, he wouldn't have given it to you. And the way he came, I know that you cannot come up with this. 
So I know the areas you can, but this one, I know you will not. So if he came to you, he didn't come to you, to me, he's you. And he's even concerning the office youth. And he said, before you leave office. So there's a time frame. So it's you, so go ahead. I was like, God, please change this. But the thing kept on coming and coming and coming. I, he mentioned somebody, he said, I should um, discuss with that person. This person happens to be someone that worked with me. I, I was opportuned to head uh, one uh, resource group and this person was uh, uh, one of the members. And uh, he was so he was so good. I didn't even know he was a publisher. I shared it with him. <laughs> that was a mistake of my life. Since that day, ah, I don't rest. He will call. Is chapter one ready? Is this chapter ready? He will, and when he read it, he will just wow, mommy, more, 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 more. I'm waiting for the next. I want to read the next. I want to read. You know, he the the ginger in alone will make me to sit down and start the next one immediately. I'm sending it. You must have a support system. Let some people keep some people around that check check that vision to read that can call you and say how far. Uh, what, uh, which um, where are you? What is the progress? Don't just you know um, die with that vision. Share it with someone that believes in you and that believes you can do it. That guy, that man, <laughs> he was like, I've been waiting for this. If I've been, I've been saying, God, when will this woman release some of the things she has been sharing with us? When will she release this? So he was so excited. He was so you know he was so excited. So. He saw me, if I, he has already given me date that that book must be out before she looked. I was like, just come and say, ah, to be frank with you. <laughs> I was like, by the end of this month, if I, by this week, the plan is that the last chapter should be, I should be done with the last chapter. Most of the things you are hearing tonight is just an extract from the book. It's just, just, just an extract from the book. Praise God. And I believe before the year runs out, the book will be out. So keep someone, keep, get somebody involved, someone that believes in you, somebody that can be checking you, that can keep you on your toes, that can make sure that you are, you are not deviating, that what you shared with, with him or with her is not, uh, you didn't dump it somewhere, you are, you are running with it. So please, there must be somebody you, share, you are sharing that vision with apart from your husband, somebody outside that believes in you, praise God. And lastly, let's look at things you must avoid. You must avoid vision killers. You must avoid vision killers. And one of the vision killers is wrong company. One of the vision killers is wrong company. A man of vision is very intentional about who is around them. I take it again. I said that a man of vision is very intentional about who is around them. Because, <clears throat> okay, let's just read 1 Corinthians 15, 33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You must be intentional with people you keep around you. Are there people that really know when you finish talking with them? Ah, they spark the fire in you. You just feel like I am waste. I, I'm not doing enough. I'm, I'm not doing enough. Surround yourself with people that can light that that can ignite the fire in you concerning your peoples on earth. That people that you know by the time you are done talking with them they're like where where are you what are you doing you know not people that will just be celebrating you for nothing in fact they are hailing you for nothing they will just come around to know to gist with you and uh, just like that no <laughs> you must connect with those people you know that will not corrupt your vision that will not kill your dream you know there are some people you will share they will say you 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 and the beg here, let's come out. We know ourselves. No, there are people that believe that even if you are, if I, by the time they are done with you, you will see yourself achieving that your dream. You will see yourself achieving that purpose, that vision. You will see it as a walkover. So keep people like that around you. You need them. 
you need them. Sometimes we actually love those ones that praise us. You know, they'll just come around and say, ah, sister, mama, you are this, you are that. When you know yourself, you know you're not doing anything. You know you're not even achieving anything. You need those people that, you know, before you talk, they will probe into your life. What are you doing? Okay, how far? How far? You know, get connected to those people. They will help you to fulfill destiny. Hallelujah. Not gossip meets. Actually, sometimes it's, it's good to, you know, relax. But before relaxing, make sure that there is something going on before relaxing and, you know, and just talking. Praise God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> So it might be time for you to look closely at the company around you. Are they fueling or draining your vision? Those people around you, are they fueling or draining your vision? If they are not, if they are not fueling it, then you need a change. They are draining it. The time you should use for that, you're using it for something else. Whenever they are around, you just notice that the day is just wasted. Not just completely wasted. Nothing achieved. Praise the Lord. And second one, uh, vision killers, number two, is time wasters. Time wasters. I think I will end here tonight. Time wasters. These are small things that distract you from the main thing. They are small things that distracts you from the main thing. For instance, you have a pressing task before you, but you will tell yourself, you will only use a few minutes to check your mail, just a few minutes. Let me just check my mail. Then one thing will lead to another, and one hour is wasted, sometimes hours wasted. <laughs> no. <laughs> Social media can kill you, my dear. It can make you useless. Sometimes you just open the place. Another thing will just pump in. You want to check. Another one will pump in. You, you check. And if you have something to do for that day, please let it wait. Let social media wait. Let internet wait. If there is nothing you are browsing, why are you what are you looking for? If you notice this year, <laughs> I've quite slowed down. In. It's not really that I would do. the point I don't even have the time. I don't even have the time to start, you know, sometimes I'll just, uh, it's been a while, I'll post, I'll leave. Or sometimes, with, I'll, sometimes I'll know that it's 30 minutes. If I want to spend 30 minutes to answer mails or to check some things, I will limit myself within that time frame. If not, there are so many things to kill your day, to kill your time. So you must be mindful of time wasters. Everything might, might appear important, everything, even on that internet you're checking, those uh, responses, those re replies, they might appear very important, but you don't need everything. They might appear important, you don't need everything. You don't need everything. So please, mind time Wasters. Sometimes somebody will just wake up and come to your house, talk, 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 talk. By the time you look at time, the person came around nine. By the time you check time, it's even time for school runs. It's already 2 a.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. And the person is still there talking. This is just the sweet, though. You might be enjoying the sweet, but the assignment is waiting for you. The assignment for the day is still waiting for you. So when you notice that when somebody comes around, the day is just gone, <laughs> my dear, you have to rethink. Tell the person, please, oh, I'm not around. Maybe I will let you know when I'll be around. I remember one day somebody visited me. She, she had a challenge. She came. But I noticed that the talk was not, there was no end. Talk, talk, talk from morning to you. That I was just inside. The program I had for the day, what I planned for that day, I didn't go half. So I was just praying inside me. Can this person just leave? I was already done. So by the time she was leaving, she said, um, please, ma, can I just be coming around for us? She, she's older than me. She wasn't for my, she's actually older than me, just by privilege. She came around for, 
for counseling. And she said, I'll be coming around for us to pray together, you know, you know, just to pray together. I just said, please, ma, I have a prayer group and it's outside. So I'll send you the date so that when we are meeting, the time of our meeting, you can come to the venue. Because I know if that woman comes to my house, that day is gone. You know, these kind of people that when they are talking, they are not changed. It's as if they are not going anywhere. And they just feel that you too, you are just not going anywhere, you are not doing anything. It, it was so irritating for me, daddy. So if you have people like that, that when they come, your day is wasted, please arrange politely, have a way, you know, to tell them, you know, uh, just coyly, just like this person, I said, okay, you can come around, but please, before you come, you notify me. If it's for prayer, you know, I will send you my prayer uh, group time. We can meet at the venue where we are praying, so that, um, in my mind, so that she, she will not just come to the house. So please, it's very important to mind the time wasters, the company you keep, that is a uh, they could actually kill the vision you have for your life. The Lord bless you. I hope you, you with this uh, few things we've discussed tonight, you've been able to have a light to what to do so that you can fulfill purpose. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much, Mom. Thank you so much, Mommy. You are so blessed. Especially me. Huh? Ah, we need to avoid time wasters. If not, won't be able to fulfill our destiny. Wow, 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 wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. The fire tonight is wonderful. <laughs> Jesus, I've not been able to overcome, um, to come out of the one of last year. I'm still in another one tonight. Oh my God. Thank you so much, mommy. We are so blessed tonight. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for coming to impact us tonight. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you and renew your strength. In the name of Jesus, we are so grateful. Man. We will be coming on WhatsApp for our, for our question and answer. Question and answer will be on WhatsApp, man. Thank you so much, man. We are grateful. Our regards to Daddy. Thanks to Daddy for allowing you to come and be a blessing to us. Thank you so much, man. God bless you, man. Yeah. See you on our WhatsApp group right now, man. It's okay, okay, right now. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Bless Thank you. Okay, royalty mother, we are going to meet right now on our WhatsApp group. Ready your your question. Mommy will be available to answer till now till tomorrow morning when she will have time to answer all the questions. Please make sure you write it down. Hallelujah. Ah. Your vision is translated via your purpose. Wow. I'm so blessed tonight. Thank you so much. See you all on our WhatsApp group. God bless you. Good night. Bye-bye. You see the sun. See how it shines bright. Are you a full-time pastor's wife? Ever heard about Pastor's Wife Praying Mom platform? Glad to let you know that Pastor's Wife Crane Mom celebrates our third year anniversary. The theme for the program is Bulletproof Minister's Wives. Last year, we were beautified. This year is touching not my beauty. The date for this program is 24th to 30th of October 2022. And the venue is live at Facebook. Get set as anointed ministers will be ministering live. Come one, come all, as we wear our bulletproof to show forth God's glory, glory, glory.